Hello everyone and welcome to this week's No FOMO Charts Crypto and Stocks TA Charts video. Today's July 14, 2024, just after 6.30 p.m. Remember, this is a swing trading, position trading, and investing charts and education video on No FOMO Charts. I'm on YouTube X and Trading View. Let's start with the crypto news. The German government reportedly has zero Bitcoin remaining. They emptied and sold all the Bitcoin in their wallet, which is good in the short term. However, in the future, Mt. Gox Bitcoin sell-off could occur after more repayments are being paid back to their customers. Europe accounts for 37% of global cryptocurrency transaction value. Now, the rumor for Ethereum ETFs is that there are up to eight amended Ethereum spot ETFs that could be approved earlier in July by the US SEC. Originally, the US SEC said September as the July approval target, but earlier would be welcome in the market. Let's go to total. Now, remember last week what I was saying. I actually bought this four hour double bottom here just around $2 trillion. Why did I do that? Just quick trade review and a lesson is first off, it was a very volatile sell off. I saw wicks on the candle bodies, momentum on the MACD histogram and double bottom support on the RSI and that Bitcoin position is up 10%. Ethereum's up 12% and it's good. So it just timed really well with the finale of the German government sell-off. Also, it was also out of this Bollinger Band down here. So just from experience knowing that this could be a potential support level bouncing off that 382 Fibonacci. Now, moving forward, what's next for Bitcoin? So if this is our breakout out of this blue resistance trend line diagonal, it could hit the 2.2 trillion. At some point, it would be healthy to have a small little pullback. This reminds me of May 2024 price action. After we have a crash, we have some candle body wicks here, a rally, maybe a little bit of a sell off. However small that's going to be just to retest, make sure we're OK here. So it could potentially turn into an upside down hidden shoulders or uptrend reversal. Now, that's a bullish case. The resistance 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 trillion targets. Now, if we have a bearish sell-off, if somebody, another whale comes into the market and tries to sell again, then we're going to try to defend that double bottom support of 1.9 trillion on the downside. On the weekly, a nice double bottom, tweezer bottom on the weekly candle. Very good. The RSI is in 50 neutral as well. Now, on the four hour, I was watching this for almost two weeks now. We had the first oversold and then the retest, which is a higher low in the price pattern. And we continue to make higher lows. Now we're hitting the 200 EMA right now on the 400, on the four hour, excuse me. So the good thing is the one hour EMAs are up crossed. Now we could get a little bit of sell off retest and then one more bounce. And hopefully over time, it could take about one or two weeks if this is the true rally for Bitcoin to four hour up cross back into an uptrend for the total crypto market cap, I mean. Now, switching to a Bitcoin chart, start off with the weekly here. We did have that nice double tweezer, double bottom on the price, piercing up to resistance, which is about 61,500. On the daily as well, we did have that double bottom wick here of the price. Same similar setup, something very important for crypto, MACD, histogram momentum, double bottom on the RSI, an extreme volatile level that is holding on the support above 55,000 where I bought Bitcoin. And we can see it easier on the four hour level of support about 55,000. Same thing as total. Now we're approaching the overbought range. It could extend just a little bit higher. Let's pull up a pivot. It's above the white pivot, which is good. We're hitting R1. Next level up is way up here at 67,000, but the hourly is showing signs of life here with this hourly golden up cross above the pivot points. Good, like I said, a little bit of retest and try to break above 62,000 this week unless there's a whale that's gonna come in and sell. Now, I just wanna point out here, if you like the RSI indicator, as many traders and algorithms do, just wanna point out here, 
that we have not have we have not had oversold RSI level of 25 since one year ago. And I want to just reiterate this, that this is a potential setup for Bitcoin. We could just actually go sideways for a little bit or slightly uptrend before we have an explosion with, say, eight Ethereum ETF approvals all happening in the same week or month. That could be the next catalyst. So we are in stock earnings right now. That's having some spillover volatility, especially what happened last week. Ethereum, this is good. We held that support level of 2,800. And this is what I'm talking about. You just take risk on support levels. Yes, it was a, li yes, it was a little bit nerve wracking with all that setup with the sell off, but this turned into a double bottom zone. So I bought Ethereum just off of that experience, literal double bottom on the four hour. Exactly what I was, one of the three scenarios, two of the scenarios happened. I said, we need a double bottom and then an uptrend reversal. Exactly happened. I'm up 12% on this easy trade. If I just had patience, I was waiting through all of this. Once we lost this, uh, I closed my position, my bull position and waited. All I had to do was wait two days three days, maybe up to here, five days, just wait a week. That's called swing trading. Patience. Now, the next setup, next targets on the resistance, 3,300, 3,500, 3,600, and then 3,800 on the top side. On the weekly, everything's going to look very similar here, the double bottom as well. So as long as we hold that support level, we are okay. Daily is very similar as well, but we have yet to break over the big trend line. So I'm waiting for that to happen this month. Let's go to Binance Coin here. We'll go faster to end the crypto segment. Had a nice hammer candle on the weekly. Everything's looking very similar. A higher low on the four hour to maintain this uptrend. Resistance about 569. 580 and 600 up there on the top side. This is what I'm waiting for. Now, if I can put a trend line, we're just writing that trend line. Just beware of any little flash crash trying to spook the market if that happens on Binance Coin. Binance still the number one exchange worldwide. Solana. Nice double bottom here. Again, just having patience for these setups. Crypto responds very nicely to the technicals. And I'm, I'm seeing now the confirmed weekly double bottom has appeared. I like this. We're holding firmly above 130 support. Now I need to see the breakout above 145. If we measure this move here, this weekly double bottom, we could go 15% to my upside target, which is 170. Just need to really hold that this week, this month. It's good that our size is still 52. There's still room to run here, but we need this breakout in the price on Solana. And we're still just barely uptrending here. Somebody could draw an intermediate rising wedge pattern, which is good. Just beware that the support, I don't want to get too bullish on the video to make people FOMO. So I just want to give people better targets. So if it ever comes back down to about like 140 or 142, could be a, another level of support where I might seek a re-entry. I don't want to keep buying breakouts all the time. Sometimes breakouts don't always work. We're, we're already seeing the 15 minute, one hour sell off the time making this video. So looks like we're going to get some support coming into the market. Okay, that's going to do it for crypto. Let's switch over to stocks. Thank you for watching the crypto segue. If you like this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe for more crypto charts. All right. It's July 14, let's get into stocks. Now, stock earnings season is well underway. We're on the second week, basically, of the start. And a lot of big name companies, these are the big global companies, big week. With a lot of volatility last week, investors rotating out of technology into small cap stocks, very apparent on QQQ, rotating into IWM ETF. So we have BlackRock, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, just in a few, Morgan Stanley, Progressive State Street, some insurance companies, health companies, United Health Group, Johnson Johnson, Interactive Brokers, Prologis, mixed bag really, Alcoa, Discover, Kinder Morgan, United Airlines, Abbott Labs, Taiwan Semiconductor, Netflix, American Express, Travelers as well. The big five I'm watching this week, Bank of America, Johnson Johnson, Prologis, 
United Airlines, Netflix, probably also TSM because that's like a, a chip semiconductor AI play as well. We have data this week, manufacturing index, Fed Chair Powell speech, retail sales, core retail sales, building permits for real estate, unemployment claims, and a bunch of FOMC member speeches to end off the week. Now, the bunch of the data that came out last week was very, very interesting to witness. So June CPI inflation declined by only 0.1%, and that's the smallest monthly increase since August 2021, almost three years. Very good. June PPI inflation, however, increased up by 0.2%, a monthly increase. The unemployment rate increased up by up, up to 4.1%, and that's the highest reading in almost three years. So it went up to 4.1%. So we're seeing a lot of three-year all-time moves in these uh, data points. It's very interesting. Now, like I said, some traders and investors rotated out of tech into smaller cap stocks. I did the same. And Warren Buffett indicator hits a level of two this month. This is significant. Uh, you could Google this separately. There's a bunch of news on it last week. Hit a level of two, the highest number being about 2.18. That happened before the stock market crash of 2022 and during uh, after COVID as well. So it signals an overvalued stock market. It might not signal the top, top, absolute top of the market, but it just shows that stocks are overvalued at this time. So to go super aggressive all in right now could be a mistake um, just in for me, because what I'm saying is right here, the highest level of the Warren Buffett indicator at 2.18 end of December 2021 marked the exact top before we had a negative crash, negative 25% crash in the market. We're hitting the two level. So according to charts, now we're moving to stock spy. You can see it on the charts. It's really obvious. A bearish divergence is building on the daily on the weekly chart. It also, was also building on the daily chart as well in terms of momentum loss, okay? So at some point, this is going to fail. And how is it gonna fail? Well, we need bearish catalysts. On the technical setup, it needs to close below 550, and then we have a downtrend. That's how it's gonna fail. We need one of the, if you're a bear, you need to see one of these start to sell off like 3%, and then you know we have a problem. But we're not low RSI purple, like we were over here, we're high RSI purple in the relative trend, um, in the relative strength. So, and that's why just watch out, you know, a lot of people start to get excited about stocks towards the end of the market. And you never want to buy the, the top. You don't want to be the last investor in the market. Um, so at some point, if the market starts to fold over and downtrend, I'm actually going to short and open some put options. But until that happens, I'm not going to time it perfectly. Just understand, are we low or are we high price right now? We are high price right now relative to the past. So SPY, next resistance up 568 here. And the four hour as well, 572 is the resistance target support level of 551 and 555 on the downside. The weekly... I don't see anything extreme yet. We almost had a sell-off for a couple of weeks ago, but uh, market's still going strong. And we had a little bit of sideways for a couple of days. This is what I'm talking about. Investors rotating out of tech right here. Big, big. That was a huge move for other stocks. But I uh, want to see if, if it's not going to break higher than 561. And I'm going to look for a breakdown at 555, but it's all earnings dependent. So I'm not going to try to time it perfectly. Four hour. We're still in the up cross, one hour still in the up cross, daily still in the up cross of EMAs. Weekly, we're just a little bit in the, uh, we're pushing on the top side of that Bollinger Band. All right, let's hurry up and move here to QQQ. So to make myself clear, we're not hitting the absolute top of the market. I don't believe so yet, but on tech stocks, you can see way, way obvious bearish divergence here. It's like a clear double top of the M and so somebody should, uh, shorted and opened up their position. Now, tech is a little bit more risky. You could see we've had several times where people try to time the top with a shooting star 
shooting star and a nice doji candle from last week. It's not extreme bearish divergence, but on the daily chart, it's there. So just warning people, if any tech earnings are bad, we could have a crash on tech. It's just so overvalued right now. Everyone wants it so bad um, in terms of the gains of the tech stocks. So just when there's incredible greed in the market, I'm going to back away. So just be aware of that if that ever comes true. The resistance 503 and support 492. It's too early to tell on a daily chart if it's a, a uh, downtrend yet. We need a lower high and then another lower low to break us out of that trend line. If we stay inside, it's okay. Then we just get another bullish trade going on. Dow Jones on the weekly is not extremely overbought. And you can see we had some support moves. There was some hesitation here, but it looks like Dow Jones is trying to break out above $400 on the weekly chart. Certainly on the daily chart, there's plenty of a little bit more room. There's about uh, probably 4% room to go up to about 418 before we have some kind of weird, strong overbought move in the market. The four hours is starting to get there. But it's still golden up cross, right? And you can see the longer term high, higher high, higher low. Where's the next higher high? How far can it go? That's the upside target. Just need to break above uh, 403, and the uh, the support to the downside is only 398. Now IWM, you could clearly see a symmetrical triangle breakout. I also went long a bunch of uh, smaller cap stocks, and um, you could see it happen on the weekly chart. That higher low was setting up. It took a long time, it took like a couple months for this to actually come true. And it happened because the shorts got uh, squeezed out, in my opinion, because there was a higher um, time frame head and shoulders set up, but then it turned to a higher low and they got squeezed out with the breakout. And then we had that tech crash for one day. So it's nice that the momentum's building. Let's not get too comfortable here. Uh, we had the start of the four-hour uptrend, so I'm expecting at some point, if we don't have a massive breakout, to have a retest of support to the downside to about uh, 211, maybe even 209. Retest this very strongly, establish the next higher low, and, and seek out the next higher high. Okay, finishing off this video, I'm just going to finish off with uh, DXY here. We can see DXY, the dollar currency index, that had a lower low in the price. Now this is resistance right here at 106.25 and then we had this sell off. Now we're below the support trend line. What could happen is a little bit of a bounce to about 104.83. If it's gonna be a textbook setup, it might not be. And we could eventually end up down here as the market rallies, the stock market rallies. So it's right at a level of support at 104. And we're stuck between here, 106, 104. So we could consolidate one scenario. We could crash in the bearish scenario for this. I'm going to rapid fire the rest. Just very, very quickly call outs. So U.S. oil in the resistance zone of 82, looking like a downtick on that MACD daily histogram. Natural gas hitting a four-hour level support, but the technicals don't always work. But... Um, I'm thinking about going long here in 15, uh, 42, 16. There's a little bit $16, excuse me, a 6% range here up to $16 because it is quite oversold here. We're going to see if it can hold this area. Um, so it's a real binary trade for me. If it bounces up long that, if it crashes down, just keep shorting or put option. But it's 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 really down here. You know what I'm saying? It's It's pretty low hitting the support it's not at the absolute bottom yet next up gold hitting resistance point gonna see if we have gonna break out of here because we're seeing momentum here uh see if it's gonna break out above 222 now silver as well seeing some momentum and um but it looks like it tried to have a gap up and a fail here so it looks like it wants to maybe push down to about 2756 gap film downside copper as well had a nice little lower high with some momentum here. A little choppy. If we look in for clues, it looks like a little bit of an EMA up cross here on the hourly. Yeah. So if we could barely hold on to the 2792, might be able to launch here for our did up cross as well. Try to get a higher high if it's possible. 
Let's end off with some rapid fire crypto. Some people, I should have done this earlier, but let's rapid fire the rest here because I don't want people to feel bad about me not doing altcoins. So we, we're still in the downtrend here on Cardano. I like this oversold bounce. We need to test this resistance level. Could pull back to about 41 cents before we break off to 46 cents. Ripple XRP had a very nice oversold bounce. This is what you want. Oversold conditions with a hammer candle with the higher low and pierced all the way here. Shorts got squeezed out. Definitely. These shorts right here on Monday got squeezed out. Now, next level is see if we can pull back to hold 50 cents. Maybe this could turn to upside down head and shoulders before we uh, try to retest 58 cents. But not all cryptos are up. You can see AVAX still in the down cross. If we could hold support here, maybe this one can make a uh, bounce to about 29 to 33. Dot with a very subtle higher low pattern, still in the death cross, but these some of these altcoins are going to go slow. Next target $7, support 578. Dogecoin as well, just got that death cross, but sometimes you retest that level. Uh, 12.55, 12 cents is gonna be that resistance level. See if we can break out above the uh, 20 EMA here at 11.41. Now support level at 10.55. Shib, same deal. Death cross barely, maybe we might get a, a saving upside down head and shoulders here. If that's true, that upside target would be 20% up. See if can if ship can do it or not. If not, might get a rejection down for another consolidation leg down. Retest. Matic, very death cross still. Loss of support, down. Now bounce. It might pierce, but it's stuck right at resistance. So I have to pierce through that all the way up to 59. Need lots of buyers for Matic and liquidity as well. Okay, uh, let me go a little bit more. I'm just going back to back rapid fire here because we're going to earnings. Microsoft. Hitting that resistance and pulling back a little down tick here on the uh, MACD histogram. Remember that downside support, if we have something bad happening in tech is 438, resistance 472. NVIDIA as well, already had the sell off, but wanna watch out for potential lower high in NVIDIA and then a lower low. So my original target of 110 all the way down to 100 still stands because if this fails, this is a major uh, turnaround spot for NVIDIA potentially. Apple's different, had a nice rally breakout, but Apple weekly chart is getting into the overbought zone. The monthly chart, not quite into overbought zone. Daily chart in that double top area. You'll know when we have a problem on Ape, you'll know we have a problem on Apple is as soon as we break down below this trend line here about uh, 220. So once this happens right into earnings, either direction, up or down, and then the earnings reactions, but we need to break above 233 or else we're probably gonna retest the 220 zone. Wrapping up the end here, Amazon, we had this little symmetrical ascending triangle breakout, ascending triangle breakout, but that's over now, and we hit the target, we're pulling back now because of the sell-off. Now, it's not as overbought, but it's getting there, and we can use pivots as clear levels of resistance. So 204 is next resistance level up, 213 as well. The pivot point might be retested at a 190, high, low, high, low. Uh, pattern 190 support meta as well just hitting a, a general level of support at 533 here the rsi getting a reset back into the 40 range and the weekly uh interesting tried to hit a higher low and it just can be immediately rejected so somebody made a big transition move there support at 493 and gap filled down to 473 is a possibility tesla right now remember this Original upside down head and shoulders symmetrical triangle breakout is over the 34% with the target. Tesla reports earnings on July 23rd. Now we could get a recovery bounce. It's actually not over. Tesla bulls like to push things as hard as possible hard as possible. High up. Weekly is doji candle. So this is a little bit of a, a warning sign to me. If we don't recover and keep going higher. Uh, Tesla price might end up fading down after a while, but I need to see the domino effect of the EMA's death crossing. That hasn't happened yet. Hourly, yet. The 15 minutes happening. So see if on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if we get the sell off, then I might open up an additional put option on Tesla. But it's because the one hour and four hour is still here. See if this turns to a lower high and try to push down to 215. If, however, the bulls 
uh, takeover on the day trading, then the resistance is 265. We're gonna watch for that breakout for an additional long. SMH was the real clue here. SMH had that double top. It's not completely over though, but you can see the bearish divergence in semiconductors is so obvious. That's why anybody played that Bollinger Band reversal. So the um, resistance at 283, the big support down here at 255. So it has quite a long range to play here. Doji candle on the last week, but you can obviously see bearish divergence on the oscillator and the four hour as well. We're still up cross, but you can kind of see the price is not in a clear uptrend anymore. That potential lower high with a potential even little mini lower high on the inside here. So looking for maybe if it breaks down to 265, 264, um, might start to short or open up a put option. But if this holds um, on the hourly, the bullish good case is if it turns to an uptrend, we might get that last couple of trades before um, traders really close out before earnings. All right, I want to give people a little extra value in some chart setups here and some education. Just want to remind people, if you like to stream, go ahead, video, go ahead and click like and subscribe. But also, to let's not underestimate the beautiful power of one of my favorite tools of TradingView, it's Bar Replay. If you're having trouble on the charts for whatever reason, if you're missing trades, if you're buying um, too high and then you're getting stopped out, if you're missing the low spots, just keep bar replaying. I do it on a weekly basis. Bar replay, your favorite indexes, stocks, or crypto. Just pull it back here, right? And let me just get, um, let's say two. And remember, you could just play the chart. And even without indicators, I could see for practice, oh, higher low. So I'm going to buy right here. I'm going to set my stop loss to the bottom, which is a very small stop loss for an example. Let's go 3% to make it very clear what people are doing here. And somebody could target a 6% on the upside with the take profit. Now let it go. It's not going down. So I have nothing to be afraid of. Leave my stop. All right. So in this particular case, the 6% was a little bit too high. But let's just see what happens for practice if you just leave the trade on, right? My stop, I would close it, and then it finally closes out for profit of about 6%, right? So that's how we practice. Just keep practicing long or short with bar replay to improve my skills, improve our skills as traders with the risk management, position sizing, and chart setups as well for stocks and crypto. All right, thanks everyone for watching this video. Happy trading. Remember risk management, chart setups, beware of catalysts like stock earnings or uh, whale sell-offs in the uh, market. And I'll see you in the next video.